Let's mm, start. Hey, shout out to Anthony from my Patreon page who requested this video. There sure were a lot of bad Back to the Future games over the years. That's what makes Super Back to the Future 2 for the Super Famicom so intriguing. This is a quality title. It looks great, it plays fine, and it even features the Back to the Future theme song. So why did it never leave Japan? The thing that kind of sucks about making videos about old games is that the real concrete information is very difficult to come by, so we're left with speculation, anecdotes, and guesswork. My only guess is that LJN, the publisher of the Back to the Future NES titles, had that license on lockdown for Nintendo, and weren't interested in bringing that game over for whatever reason. And obviously that sucks, because Super Back to the Future 2 is a perfectly okay game and light years more playable than any of the NES or Genesis titles. Not only that, but it's also one of the most English-friendly Japan-exclusive games you can find for the Super Famicom. And hey, even if you want to know the cutscene dialogue and follow the story, there's an English patch available at romhacking.net. Super Back to the Future 2 pretty much follows the story just as you remember it, right down to specific events like Biff getting dumped in manure. How can you not love that? That. But yeah, what you see is what you get with this game. It's a very straightforward 2D side-scrolling platformer featuring Marty defeating enemies by jumping on them with his hoverboard. He can also bounce on certain projectiles to propel himself even further and reach new areas. There's also the usual power-ups here and there like invincibility. The thing is, the controls are pretty tough to get used to, to the point that there's a walkthrough level to give you a chance to get the hang of things. The B button propels your hoverboard forward, and the Y button is your jump attack. It feels annoyingly backwards at first, but it's not a deal-breaker. This is definitely the kind of game that takes a little time to get used to, and that's not necessarily a bad thing because while the controls might feel odd, they're at least consistent and fair. Ultimately though, Super Back to the Future 2 is pretty limited. I mean, all you're essentially doing is jumping, with not too many power-ups or abilities or whatever. So if your character is that limited, then it's up to the level design to provide something unique and challenging. But the level design is just okay. I like how wide open certain levels are, and the level structuring here certainly isn't bad. It's just there's not enough here to make this game any more than, like I said, just okay. If there's anything that helps Super Back to the Future 2 get over that just okay hump, it's the visual style. As you can see, they decided on kind of an anime art style here, and it works well. There's something really interesting about taking an established franchise like this and giving it an anime spin. You definitely didn't see this often back then, so it makes for a unique experience. There are some other flaws worth pointing out too, like the fact that some of the levels are really long, and if you die, you start all the way back at the beginning. There's no checkpoints. That's pretty stupid. There's also no battery save here, only passwords, but at least they're only four letters long, usually a word like frog or wolf. So yeah, Super Back to the Future 2 isn't bad, it isn't great, it has its strong points like the visual style, and it has its flaws. I will say if you love the movie, you have an easy incentive to love this game, because I mean, you're basically playing an anime-styled version of the movie, that's pretty cool. I mean, you can't say that about any other late 80s movie, like where's the Japanese-only version of Working Girl, or Driving Miss Daisy? Alright, I'm getting off track. The point is, while the visuals may look great, and it's cool as hell to hear a 16-bit version of the Back to the Future theme, don't expect too much from Super Back to the Future 2. It's a good enough platformer, but a bit limited and it takes some time to get used to. 